It's day number three of 30 GIMP tutorials, and today you're going to discover the magical world of editing HDR images in GIMP. So let's do it. So I'm going to use two different exposures of this scene to demonstrate how to create an HDR image in GIMP. Typically, you want at least three different exposures for best results. An underexposed, an overexposed, and then an exposure in between. That's all going to depend on a couple different factors. One, the dynamic range of your camera and the tonal range of the scene. So if you have a camera that has a low dynamic range and you're shooting a scene that has a high tonal range, in other words, very bright to very dark, then you will want to do at least three exposures. Now, for this demonstration, I'm only using two exposures, and the reason why I didn't take more than two was because I was on vacation and I didn't have a tripod, which causes another issue if you're trying to do an HDR when you're hand-holding your image because it's nearly impossible to stay in the same position when you take two or more photos and that causes another problem when you try to merge them together to create the HDR, which is known as ghosting because the elements in your scene do not line up and it creates like a halo effect or ghosting effect. So for this first image layer here, I exposed for the highlights. As you can see, I captured all the detail in this area where the sun is shining, but I lost the detail in the shadows. So the second exposure, I exposed for the shadows to capture the details in the shadows. But if you take a look over here in the bottom left, there's no details there. So I should have done a third exposure for here. But again, I didn't have a tripod and I knew I'd have a problem with ghosting if I try to work with more than two images. And the secret to blending and merging these layers together to create an HDR is through the use of a layer mask. Not just any layer mask, a white or a black one. If we come over here and click here to add a layer mask, let me show you which one we want to use. We're going to click right here, grayscale copy of layer. And what that's going to do is it's going to convert your color image into grayscale and it's going to apply it on a layer mask. So as you know, white adds, black removes. So when you apply this image as a grayscale on a layer mask, those different levels of gray, blacks to white, will then begin adding and removing parts of the image to keep detail in certain parts of the image, and it will blend together with the image layer below. So I'm gonna click Add, and it's going to take a little bit longer than usual versus white and black. So now I have an exposure in between the two that I started with and I have my detail in my shadows and my detail in my highlights, but the highlights are now overexposed because this image is very overexposed in the highlights. So now we need to continue editing the image to adjust the brightness levels of the different parts of the scene, which is known as dodging and burning. So we're gonna make part of it brighter, part of it darker. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna darken up my shadows layer here. So I'm gonna select this layer and duplicate it. And I'm gonna call it exposure adjustment. I'm gonna use my levels tool here to make the image layer darker, just so that those highlights are a little bit darker. But I don't wanna to go too dark because I begin losing detail in the shadows here. So we're gonna fix that by adding a white layer mask and then painting with black to remove that edit from different parts of the image. I'm gonna grab my paintbrush tool with the letter P, and then I can paint with black in the shadows to bring back some of those details. I'm going to go ahead and use a larger brush here. And I'm not going to make this perfect. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this and bore you to death. I just want to give you the information so that you can then apply it to your own images. So I'm just going to do some shadows over here. 
and I may want to do some shadows here. Now, if you find that the adjustment is making those shadows too bright, what you could do is, I'm going to undo that part with Command or Control plus the letter Z. You can come down to your tool options and paint with a gray color or adjusting the black to a lower opacity level, which is similar to painting with gray. So I now have 50% gray, basically, I'm painting with. And that keeps these shadows darker versus these over here, which adds depth to the image. So it's not the same throughout the different shadows because the different shadows are going to be brighter or darker in different parts of the scene based on where the light falls within the scene. So it's definitely going to be darker over here because the face of this part of the cliff is away from the sun, whereas this one is facing it. So I may actually want to make these shadows brighter than over here. So that's just a quick tip on how to add depth to your images. So what I want to do now is I want to darken up the highlights. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this layer here, right click and select new from visible, which is going to merge all these layers and the layer masks into one layer. So I can turn all these off and it's not going to matter because everything has been merged into here. And now I'm going to do some dodging and burning, which is basically making part of the image darker or brighter. And I need my dodge and burn tool to do that. And then I need to make sure I have the correct tool selected in the tool option. So if we scroll down here, you'll see dodge and burn. So dodge is going to make the image brighter wherever you paint. Burn is going to make that part of the image darker wherever you paint. So I want to darken up the highlight. So I'm going to leave it on burn. And then when I begin painting in that area, it gets darker. So again, you can adjust the opacity of this brush to gradually build up how dark that part of the image becomes versus applying it all at one time like I am now. But I'm also layering different amounts as well by going over and applying new brush strokes in these areas here, which again continues to make it darker. I may want to come down here and darken up the water as well maybe a little bit darker in here. And again, this is just going to add some more depth as I apply my burn brush in different areas. I may want to click and do some different strokes up here in the tree as well. So it's not as flat and adds a little bit of depth in that part of the image as well. Maybe this tree in the foreground, I want to darken up as well. So you don't necessarily just want to paint one continuous stroke. You may want to paint a small stroke and then a bigger stroke and just kind of break it up a little bit so it's not as even and that's going to add some depth and make it a much more natural looking edit. Now if you decide that the shadows are still too dark and you want to bring out more details you can come into the tool options here and select dodge and that's going to brighten up the shadows but as you can see that's too bright. So I'm going to undo that with Command or Control plus the letter Z. If you scroll down to the bottom of the tool options here, you'll see a slider that says exposure. And that's going to allow you to reduce the intensity of the edit. So now when I apply the dodge tool, it's not as intense as it was before. I'm going to undo that again. And then you may have noticed right here, right above exposure, we have an option called range, which will allow you to target the different tonal ranges of your image. So we can apply our edit to the shadows, midtones, or highlights, and midtones is selected by default. So I could have selected highlights and applied my burning to the highlights in that manner, but I prefer to keep it at midtones because I like the effect that I get from midtones versus highlights. But then again, it depends on the image. Sometimes I will use highlights or shadows depending on what I'm trying to achieve for my final edit. So the last thing I wanna share with you is sharpening your images. So the first thing we need to do is duplicate our layer again so we can work non-destructively. I'm gonna double click right here and call it sharpening. Then I'm going to come up here to filters down to enhance and select high pass. 
So this is going to add the contrast along the edges of the details in your image to give the impression that your image is sharper. The only problem is we can't really see the original image. And the reason why is this particular view allows you to see where that contrast is being applied based on the depth of the colors. We have some greens and blues here, and that's showing the outlines of the different details in the image. And if you wanna increase the amount of sharpening, you will add more contrast. So if I adjust the contrast level here to the right, it will then update this image view to better show where the detail is being sharpened. So now we have more color or more sharpening along different parts of the image. Now, the one thing you wanna be careful of is not adding too much contrast. So what you will need to do to determine that is to change the blending mode option here. So by default, we have replace, which is the mode that you're currently seeing right now. If we click here and choose another one like overlay, it will remove that view and show the original image. Now we can see if we have over sharpened the image. I'm going to click on preview here to turn it off and back on. And then we can decide whether or not that's too much or too little. I would recommend not too much. Otherwise, it's going to look unnatural, especially when you're sharpening people. When it comes to landscapes like this, I don't mind more sharpening than not. So it's entirely up to you and your own creative vision on what you like. I actually like it at this level. I may want to tone it down just a little bit. So I'm just going to bring it down just a little and I'm happy with that. Now, before you click that OK button, there's something else you should do. And that is change the mode back to replace. Now, why is that? Well, you're going to have more control over the image in this mode once you click OK. And here's why. We can now go up to our blending mode options up here and choose the blending mode that we want to use. Otherwise, you're stuck with that blending mode that you selected in the high pass editing window. All right, make sure to check out that playlist to your left to learn more about editing, retouching, and styling your images in GIMP. Thanks for listening and have an awesome day.